start, so if you, you all wouldn't mind rising up, standing up to your feet and clapping along with us and singing, be sure to enjoy your help. In fact, uh, the first song we're doing is uh, kind of new for us. So if we can get you going like the hand clap. There you go.
weakness and their pain. There you go. That's faith in Jesus. Anybody want to share something? <laughs> Very good, Wayne. say at this point, God is good all the time. And all the time, God, is, God good. is good. Our God is alive in 2015 and forever. I'm really glad that uh, Hank was kind of nice when it came to crazy. I was thinking more insane, but he's a nice guy. So, all right, what do we got on way of announcements today? This is streak 224 continuous Mondays that there's been a bike here. Now that's continuous. That's not summer and stuff. That's through winter and sleet and rain and all that stuff, we're kind of making the mailman look bad. So, but if there's any mailman, I'm sorry. Uh, tonight's station is the original Anderson's Ice Cream, Sheridan Drive in Kenmore. That's where we'll be going. And Chopper will be leading the ride tonight. Pastor Don is off on a little R&R, &R, which uh, we all hope he is getting. And we, we know how he is. He loves his flock and his sheep, and he doesn't like to exactly leave. So. Uh, bikers at the bakery every Wednesday, Olson's, corner of Sheridan and Harris Hill. I know how that goes, hot dogs, coffee, and then you get to buy some wonderful, beautiful cupcakes that make us all fat. Uh, 725 Dice Run, supporting Kaylee's kindness. You fly around the table, patty or chopper. Now that is for Bikers Against Child Abuse, right? Oh, okay, it's for different, okay. And the next one, 
is uh, that's a Hogs and Heroes Chapter 5 fundraiser, Harlan Volunteer Fire Department, 10 a.m. See Paul, Debbie, Rob, or Mary Ann. So, all right, is that it? That's it, all right. Um, you know, now just to kind of go in a little prelude of a few folks, you know, remember what Pastor Don was saying last week. You know, it's kind of like, we don't want to get redundant, but, you know, there is some major moral issues that are going on in, in today, and, you know, we do have to confront them, and we do have to, you know, stand our ground. As well as people stand their ground for things that they believe in, you know, we should be able to stand our ground for things that we believe in. Um, and, you know, I mean, actually God wants us all to play nice in this sandbox that he calls Earth, and, you know, we see how things go from there. But as uh, Pastor Don talked last week, you know, some were saying that America is not a Christian nation, right? And we all know that. We've all heard it. Uh, and he gave us a few quotes from John Quincy Adams and others showing that America was founded on Christian morals and values from the Word of God. Now we're talking, you know, freedom of religion, right, from the oppression of England. and that. But, you know, they come in freedom of religion, all different kinds of religions. I hate to say I get in trouble a lot, which I probably am now, that... You know, I don't believe that some of those are religions, or that's just what they are, is a religion. Um, you know, we know our Savior, and, and it's in here, right? It's in here. But Pastor Don read from Psalm 3312. I'm just going to go over that again. No, that's the second one. Did I put the other one in there wrong? I might have did that, but... I'll just go over it then. When we find it, we'll find it. That'll be the second one. Pastor Don read from uh, Psalm 3312. There it is. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. The words I love there the most, a couple of them, blessed is the nation, you know, and he chose for his inheritance. You know, God chooses. A lot of people don't follow. He chooses, right? So, do you guys remember that a little bit? A little bit, maybe? Just throw me a bone here, a little bit. Somebody nod, somebody say yeah. Okay, good, good, okay, thank you. You know, I would like to expand on that just a little bit more. You know, with scripture and quotes from a couple of men that also went on to be our president. The, the scripture that's been caught up in my head lately and is one of my favorite ones of probably all time is Second Chronicles 7.14. And that is, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Okay? That's a pretty strong, strong statement from our Lord and Savior, you know, from, from our God. That he will heal and he will forgive, but we got, we got a part that we have to do, you know, be obedient, turn from our wicked ways. Okay. Just going to leave that up there and let that kind of resonate in you. Uh, now the quotes from the presidents that I was talking about. One is from, of course, our very first president, and another is from our 40th president. This is a prayer from our first president, which we all know, hopefully, is George Washington, right? Okay. Um, Almighty God, and just to start, I love that old English wording from these guys. I don't know what kind of fits in, the, you know, in their choice of words. Almighty God, we make our earnest prayer that thou wilt keep the United States in thy holy protection, that thou wilt incline the hearts of the citizens to cultivate a spirit of subordination and obedience to government and to entertain a brotherly affection and love for one another and their fellow citizens of the United States at large. And finally, that thou wilt most graciously be pleased to dispose us all to do justice, to love, mercy, and to demean ourselves with that charity, humility, and pacific temper of mind, which were the characterizations of the divine author of our blessed. Religion and without a humble imitation of those example, in these things we can never hope to be a happy nation. Grant our supplication, we beseech thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. 
Uh, that's a pretty powerful statement there. You know, pretty powerful guy. Pretty powerful things happened to have that all come into being, right, our nation. Um, now I want to share a prayer from President Ronald Reagan. And he always had a way to say, to say some things too. To preserve our blessed land, we must look to God. It is time to realize that we need God more than he needs us. We also have his promise that we could take to heart with regard to our country that if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Let us, young and old, join together, as did the First Continental Congress, in the first step in humble and heartfelt prayer. Let us do so for the love of God and his great goodness, in search of his guidance and the grace of repentance, in seeking his blessings, his peace, and the resting on his kind and holy hands, on ourselves, our nation, our friends, in defense of freedom and all mankind, now and always. The time has come to turn to God and restart our trust in him for the heading of America. Our country is in need and ready for spiritual renewal. Today we utter no prayer more fervently than the ancient prayer for peace on earth. If I had a prayer for you today among those that have all been uttered, it is that one we're so familiar with. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you all peace and God bless you all. all right, you can see him delivering that type of a speech, right? Well, those are two wonderful, eloquent men unless they had good speech writers. So now it's just back to good old Wayne again at Biker Church, a little corner of the world in Tonawanda, right? As long as we do our thing and everybody else does their, their thing, it all comes together, right? So what can we do to clean back our country? What do you think when things start going all wrong, you got maybe a, a problem with your motorcycle or your car and you do 95 million different things and you're throwing wrenches around and, or something's frustrating you, right? If you can take that time to just go in and sit and relax and then you come back out and I know what I usually do is I'll just start over again. Start over from the beginning. Okay, I'm going to start over from the beginning. So you know what? I think that that's what we really have to do. There's generations of people that have not even ever graced the church doors. I think those are the people, the people that return will say the most for what we need and future generations. So starting back with the basics, I think, is what we really need. Starting with getting back to Christian morals and values on which this country was founded. You know, the situation we find ourselves in today, I don't think happened yesterday. All of a sudden it's changed, right? It's taken generations and generations, you know? Uh, what, a 40-year a journey that took, should have taken like 11 days, 11 weeks, you know, across, right? So this hasn't happened yesterday. This was a buildup. So unfortunately, it's going to take some time. Maybe God will return, and before that time, maybe not. I'm sorry to say, I feel it's going to get a lot worse before anything. I think we're coming to the, the end of the chapter of the book. Um, so we must get back to those Christian morals and values. And we don't pound people by doing that. We explain to people why it is. The defenses have already been set up so badly for Christianity that it's like we've got a whole three miles wide to cover before we can even start with the basics. So we have to start with those Christian morals and values. You know, sorry to tell all the people that think America is not a Christian nation. Well, you know, it still is. We haven't given up yet. We're not being all arrested yet. They haven't burned our Bibles. They haven't done anything like that. So. I think prayer is one of the best ways to start, that power of prayer. And I think we will always be a Christian nation. I think there will always be some people somewhere, even if it becomes the old 
thing like, oh yeah, the Christians live over there. They live in that part of the country. You know. Well, we still have a part of the country, right? Anything can happen from there. Jesus and you know, 12 men turn the world upside down. So we should be able to do a little bit. But it's, our, it's where our very foundation comes from. You know, it's like if I said to you, people of this congregation, build me a foundation on top of that seven-story building. You would look at me and think I was crazy, right? Well, I mean, not really crazy, crazy, right? right? But just crazy, right? You would probably have to say, well, we can't build a foundation on top of a building that's on a foundation. It just, it, it won't work. It just sounds silly. Well, you have to tear it down first. You have to turn that, tear that building down. Well, folks, you know what? That's what is happening. The building is being torn down by people who want to tear down our Christian beliefs to the very recognition of God himself, right down to our very foundation. We're being shaken to the very foundation. It's a term that's always been used. So it's time to pray. Time to pray for leaders. I don't care if you like them, don't like them. I've been through that an hour ago, a minute ago, then back, then flip-flop, then back. Then, you know. But it all comes down to prayer. People are only doing what they believe in. Why? Because somebody told them to believe in that. They don't have no influx of the Holy Spirit. They don't know what it really feels to accept Christ. They don't know what it really looks like to have a Christian life, a Christian attitude. It's up to us now to pray for godly men and women, to pray for this country, to pray for those good godly morals and values to show their return, to pray with the word of God in our hearts, to pray that we stand with Israel, to pray for unborn babies. And I do have to say, did you know that I think it was somebody involved with government situation and that he actually wanted to abort a baby up to two years old, saying that it's not a child, it doesn't have thinking capabilities, so therefore it's not a human. I heard that from more than one very reputable sources, so I hope that's not true, but I wouldn't put it past this world. To pray for marriages and families, we know how that's going. You know, family breakdown. Doesn't matter what happened before, what even happened before this minute. When people come to Christ, they're new, brand new. It starts from there. You know, I don't ever want to hurt anybody because they had a divorce, broken home, decided to have some sort of a uh -oh, homosexual relationship or something like that. But through prayer, we can help. We can help these folks. We can help all people. But not by fighting, not by arguing, because that's what they very expect. They expect you to fight and argue with them. Kind word turns away wrath, right? So, we also, we have to pray with this holy book as our guide. This is our instruction manual. And yes, guys, even for us, that's probably why sometimes we're messed up because we didn't read this first. Because it is basic instructions before leaving earth. This is our instruction manual. So with so many examples, I tell people, you know what? A problem that they have, no matter what it is, you come up and you ask. I may not know the answer, but I know I can find a solution in there. And the other thing I gotta tell them is, you may not like it, but that's the solution. And most of all, we have to pray deep in the depths of our very soul. Because God's word says in James 5.16, Therefore confess our sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. Yeah, that's powerful enough. It's the second part. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So, Wayne kind of goes on to things here. So God, if... Things aren't really going too good and things aren't really happening. I guess I'm not powerful and effective, right? Maybe I'm not righteous enough. I don't want to hang on that word, but maybe I'm not looking into it a little further, you know? God even says if 
you are called and you do my work, you will be held more responsible. You know, that's me and Jim and folks over here in CMA and everybody who, who carries the word of God. That's why I never wanted to be a chaplain because those words are meant, you will be held more accountable. It's like, all right, what could be worse than hell? And then I did find that out. Worse than hell is eternal separation from Christ. That was first. Because hell wasn't even meant for us. So the Bible is our foundation. We need leadership and ourselves to hold up God's word. This is a hard part to swallow. Even if it costs us everything. Right now it's costing other people everything. Right? I'm kind of thinking, geez, I hope I die before it costs me everything. Or I hope God comes before it costs me everything. I guess that's a human nature. But are we obedient? It may cost us everything. Right now we have such a godless nation and we can see the bad fruits of this nation all around us. We have to show people about God, our examples. And I know there's a lot of examples sitting out here. And then the old saying, one finger out means there's three coming back at me. So. We have examples in our lives that can heal the very life of somebody else. As we pray and ask God to forgive us, as we lay down our sinful nation and as one nation under God at his feet. Like Pastor Don said last week, if you remember, he said, you won't kill the church of Jesus Christ. Like he was talking about the guy that actually wants revenge, that churches be put back on the payroll of taxes, you know, so that they will fail. That's his goal. You know, and it's okay. If I stand up and say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to murder everybody I don't like. Right? It's like, that was okay for that guy to say that publicly. We'll just meet in houses, restaurants. That might not be such a bad thing until we get thrown out, right? Oh, well, we leave. Hey, Bill, we leave. Make more of a scene them throwing us out than us staying there. And not even a bad scene. I don't mean, you know, like throwing plates around for God or something. But, you know, just leave. So, folks, just pray. Just pray. Right now, just pray. That's what we're going to do right now. Father God, I thank you, Lord, to, to actually be living in a place and a time where I often think I would not like to live in, but I would not like to be born in times of today. But then yet, we don't know what you hold in store that your word says, and the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. So we make these choices. Our very choices is what send us away from you or an eternity with you or an eternity in hell. It's our very choices that you gave us, our free will, Lord. We just ask that you be inside of each and every one of us. You ignite that little flame, that, that single candle that we may not think much light, but as we come together, all those lights... We make a beautiful spotlight onto you, Lord. And we just love you. We praise you. We ask all these things. In Jesus' precious name, amen.